Hi, welcome to the video Full Steam Ahead, step one of the fourth innovation methodology. You're watching the YouTube channel Inspiration for Innovation. My name is Gijs van Wulfe. I'm a global speaker on innovation, creativity, and design thinking. And with these practical videos, I like to inspire you to be a great innovator. I'm talking to you from the island of Crete from my rooftop terrace. Look how wonderful it is here. Now, there are six videos on the fourth innovation methodology. There's one on the total expedition. And there is one for each phase. So we have one on full steam ahead, observe and learn, raise ideas, test ideas, and homecoming. This video is on step one the fourth innovation methodology full steam ahead. Today I'm going to talk about how to make an innovation assignment, composing a great innovation team and how to kick off a 15-week innovation project. Now stay to the end of the movie because at the end I will show you the website where you can download 20 checklists of the methodology and 13 maps. I will also show you in this video some pictures of a real life case. The case is of Bruyl in the Netherlands. It's a mid-sized company making concrete. And with this fourth innovation methodology, they invented their product portfolio and got an innovative corporate culture. So for you who see fourth for the first time, what is it? Fourth is an acronym, an acronym of the five islands, the F of full steam ahead, the O of observe and learn, the raise of raise ideas, the T of test ideas, and the H of homecoming. It's a structured journey. As of the kickoff, it is 15 weeks. And fourth combines business thinking and design thinking. From business thinking and full steam ahead, to design thinking and observe and learn, raise ideas, test ideas, to business thinking again in home coming. Now, it's a part-time expedition for the expedition members. So the core team, they require 20 days in 15 weeks. And the extended team members, which are mostly the decision makers, they spend six days on this wonderful innovation journey. The users are mid-sized, big, and globally working organizations, like, for example, Huntsman, innovating themselves in the chemical industry, or NEC, a Japanese tech giant, but also the UNHCR is using the methodology, or hospitals, or government organizations. So it is broadly used for new products, new services, new business models, new custom experiences, new inter internal processes. So today I'm going to talk to you about Full Steam Ahead. Now, the process is also scientifically proven. The Open University researched 10 cases in the Netherlands, Belgium and Germany. And out of these cases, they found that out of the four meaning your business cases, three enter the market. When you compare that in normally state gate process, Cooper and Edget, they have researched that normally out of the three, only one hits the market. So this process, applying it to your organization will double your innovation effectiveness. If you want to know more about the fourth methodology, there's this wonderful book, The Innovation Expedition. It's available in eight languages. Going into step one, full steam ahead. Full steam ahead has three activities. An innovation focus workshop, a core team introduction meeting, and the kickoff workshop. The deliverables of this phase are the innovation assignment, the composing of an ideation team, you will have a fourth planning, which is all in the departure document of the expedition. And then from the kickoff, you have identified six to 10 innovation opportunities, and you've identified potential target groups 
for Observer Learn to identify customer frictions. Now, one powerful workshop or fourth is the starting workshop, the innovation focus workshop. If you try to innovate, you say, where can we go? We go there, 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 or there, or there, or perhaps there. You spend all your resources and your time looking everywhere. And you can only do that in a rush because you have little time. So you will discover only this deep. Mm. And on the surface you find nothing. So that's why you should focus. At the end of the expedition, what do you want out of this? Right? That's what you do in the innovation focus workshop where you where you compose a concrete innovation assignment. Why do we innovate? Is it because there's a crisis or because there's big opportunity? What are we looking for? Are we looking for products, services, business models, customer engagement experiences, new internal processes? And should they be evolutionary or do we want big jumps? Should they be revolutionary? For whom? For my present customers or for totally new customer groups? Where? Here in Crete? Or Greece? In Europe? EMEA? Or are we looking for worldwide innovations? Now when? When do we want to have the products or services introduced in the market? Are we innovating now for 2021 or 2025? And most important of all, what are the criteria? How much revenues must a new innovation realize? How much margin? How much customers do we want to reach with this? And also the boundaries. How much innovation money do we, can we invest in the total project? Right? So with this, you form a concrete innovation assignment where the management, agree, management agrees about. So you can give a concrete assignment to the innovation team who knows what is expected from them. That's the result of the innovation focus workshop and the innovation assignment. After which you go for the team. Now we have the assignment. We know we want to go to the moon. Who is going to be, who is the best team there? Now, usually when you ideate on team, you say in the management team, oh, this one, this one, and 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 you get the usual suspects. I advise you to do it also in a different way. Why don't you call out for people to apply? Hey guys, we're doing this important innovation project. Who wants to be on it? And then I'll bet you get 50% names you did not expect it. Because in your company are wonderful, creative and of people. Only you might not know them. So try to compose a team in a different way. Now what makes a great innovation team? Of course we all know diversity. Diversity in departments, diversity in age, diversity in experience, diversity in skills, diversity in capabilities. But the most important thing for an innovation team is tolerance. You must have stubborn people who are tolerant because the best solutions are not in the middle. The best solutions you know, are not consensus solutions. The best solutions are on the edges. And you must be tolerant to let others ideate and defend their projects on the edges. Because that's where the goal is, and not in the middle. Once you got the team, you invite them. But we don't only have an innovation team. We also have an extended team. So, in a lot of companies, they have kind of a team and you have the steering committee. Do you know that? Steering committees? Uh, I hate uh, them. I hate uh, them. I hate them. Why? People of my age, I am uh, 60, sit there 
and then you get a business proposal on for example blockchain mm, blockchain i don't know blockchain very well so what do i do i just ask a lot of questions because if i say yes it will be my project and do i want to run the risk but i don't know blockchain very well so on in fourth we take the steering group we call them extended team we take them with us on the journey and a steering committee team member i learn here about blockchain i ideate about blockchain i see how customers respond to it and i'm a godfather of business case on blockchain so in the end i am familiar with it and the chance that i will say yes is so much bigger that's why we take the steering committee on board of the journey and we call them extended team so we have the core team and the extended team now on the kickoff they get together and they discuss together the innovation assignment is this what we want are you all committing yourself to this and when it's yes we have to prepare ourselves for the next phase because that's observe and learn You know, we have been focused for so long, we have our blinders on. So the next phase is... Hello world! I'm observing learning again, but where should we look for? So on the kickoff you identify innovation opportunities. Where are for us the opportunities we want to learn from? Which are the customer groups we like to immerse in to get their customer frictions identified? That's what you do on the, the kickoff. So, at the end of full steam ahead, step one of the fourth methodology, we have a motivated team all ready to go out to explore, to explore innovation opportunities and ready to go to identify customer frictions in the next phase, observe and learn. We'll make also other videos of course on the other phases so you will find four more videos on the next four steps of fourth so after this movie be sure to look out for the movie observe and learn step two of the fourth innovation methodology i promise you some checklist to download. Where? Here. You can download 20 checklists, 13 maps, the map in 13 languages, at fourth innovation.com. Please do, it's free. And I will be pleased if you use the fourth methodology. Why? Not to do me a pleasure. Why? Because it really delivers. My name is Gijs van Wulfen. I'm a global speaker on innovation, creativity and design thinking. You have been watching Inspiration for Innovation. Now, do me a pleasure. If you like this video, do, video, do thumbs up and subscribe here on this button, right? Now, thanks a lot for your attention and most of all, stay safe.